Welcome to Jones Blair Paint, a case for data-driven decision-making. We're ready for part three, but let's do a quick review from part two. We went through several different processes to look at the different segmentations uh, possibilities. We had the rural and the urban, the DIYers and the professional painters. Did we come to a conclusion? Well, maybe, maybe not. Now let's get ready to jump in and see what the vice president's recommendations turned out to be and which one we like or not. First VP up to bat is the vice president of advertising. So in his discussion in the, in the case file, he indicates that the discussions with their ad agency suggest that an increase of 150,000 in corporate brand advertising beyond what they're now spending, uh, emphasizing on television market, would be necessary to achieve the awareness level that they're hoping to achieve. And he presents for the review Exhibit 6, which is a percentage of the urban population who were aware of paint brands and purchased paint in the last 12 months. Now, as you've hopefully gathered by now, numbers can tell us a lot of things, but they can also be misleading depending on how they're being presented. In this Exhibit 6, we see that Jones Blair is among the awareness at 25% in the urban DFW market as far as brand awareness and that Jones Blair was in the category of one of the last brands bought. But what does that really tell us? Because we all know about a variety of brands, but that doesn't mean that was the last one we purchased or that we're likely to purchase that on our next need for that particular product. Now it's time to do some calculations. If we look at the VP's recommendation to increase spending by 150,000 over a one year time, let's see if we can do a contribution margin formula on that. We learned in our PDF that the contribution margin is 35%. So doing the math, if we take 150,000 and divide it by the 35% contribution margin, that leaves us with the amount of $428,571 in additional revenue that we need to cover the costs of that $150,000 campaign. Now let's look at the reality. Sales have been pretty flat. Is this a realistic outcome? Is spending $150,000 to increase awareness going to result in the $428,571 of additional sales that they need to recoup those costs. What do you think? The VP of Sales is up next and his recommendation is to add one more salesperson at a $50,000 a year salary, plus of course their commission, and have that person focus primarily on getting new accounts. What do you think of that idea? Before we can answer that, we need to do our due diligence and gather some intel or reconnaissance or marketing research. Let's look and see what the sales force currently is up to and what their performance has been. The VP of sales tells us that his current size of his sales force is eight reps and that over the last five years, they've managed to acquire five new accounts. Well, if there's five accounts and eight sales reps, what does that tell us? At least three sales reps have not managed to acquire a new account in, in five years. My question is, what are they doing? Now, by his own admission, the VP of sales indicates that his Reps have been become, especially in the rural areas, become part of the store that they're assigned to and helping out, doing other things besides selling paint. 
And now they're asking for an additional sales rep of 50,000 a year. If we run a break even on this, we would take the $50,000 and divide it by the contribution margin of 35%. That tells us we're going to need at least $142,857 to be able to justify that additional position within the company. Now, based on their previous record of sales or acquiring new accounts, five and five years, that's one account a year. And let's say an average account is about $20,000. Does it seem likely that they would be able to achieve the almost eight accounts they would need at $20,000 to be able to recoup that 142,857 amount? Yeah, not likely, is it? Even if that sales person was a go-getter and managed to get two or three accounts within the first couple of months, they still would not have enough time to generate the additional revenue throughout the year to be able to meet that, that goal of the, of the 142,857. So the question is, do you go with this VP of sales recommendation? Let's see if third time is the charm. Here's the VP of operations recommendation. And he says to cut all the paint prices by 20%. Let's check the figures on this one. Well, we know that the sales volume in 1986 was 4.67 million. And we also know that the contribution margin is 35%. And if we do our handy dandy math, we find out that the current contribution margin is $1,634,500. By cutting the costs or cutting the prices by 20%, that's going to impact and reduce the contribution margin that we have, which means we would have to increase our sales revenue by 86% in one year to justify or to make up for the cut in prices. Now looking at the performance of the sales team over the past five years and some of the other factors going on, does that seem very likely? Now at the very beginning, I asked you a question about which VP recommendation did you think was the best? And guess what? We found out that probably none of them were really good in their current format. And you know, anytime you sit at a management table, you're going to get a lot of people coming around making emotional decisions or pleas or suggestions and recommendations. By using the data, now you've got an unemotional method to be able to point out if a decision is worth making or not and take all the emotional junk off the table. This helps diffuse many a potential argument by just simply saying, well, that's an interesting idea. What do the numbers tell us? And you simply do the math. As you saw, this was mostly just contribution margin or a few percentages, break even. You could do that on your napkin sitting at the boardroom table and come up with some great ideas to let them know whether or not a decision is worth pursuing. Now there would be some excellent recommendations to give to this VP group about how they could restructure some of their recommendations. Maybe spending some advertising money, but on a more targeted campaign, not just brand awareness, or maybe restructuring the current sales force to incentivize them to do more sales and reduce their salaries, increase their commissions, something along those lines, or even do a different type of promotion instead of just cutting the prices. There's lots of different recommendations and I hope you'll take some time to jot down a few, get creative, think outside the box, and then back it up with the numbers. That's what doing data-driven 
decision making is all about. And in closing, what data is driving your decision making? Thanks for tuning in to our exciting and timeless Jones Blair case. See you in the next module.